This is the helpful lock picker here, and welcome back to my lock picking homeschool series. The video I have for you today is going over how to optimize the placement of your security pens to make them more effective. I'm going to be demonstrating this on an American Lock 1100 series, but this can be applied to any pen and tumbler lock. Some of the stuff that you may need to get started if you're not familiar is one, you can get a pinning mat like I have here that holds everything together. But what you really do need is a pinning tray, which you can see this wooden block here. Or you can take a piece of corrugated cardboard and you can just peel it back and you can use the corrugations to hold the pens in place. You're going to need a lock to work on. A lot of locks have sir clips on the back. I use this pickle fork to take it off and they look like this. They're a little C-shaped ring. Um, I'm not going to go over how to take off the backs of all locks. A lot of it's pretty self-explanatory if you look at it. You're going to need some keys, some pinning tweezers, and then you're going to need some pins and some security pins to work on. If you're not familiar with how to take a lock apart and put it back together, please review my video number 81, which goes over that in detail. But now I'd like to get started on how to optimize your security pins. Firstly, I'd like to go over how a key works. When you look over here, this is the American Lock bidding specification chart. So, on a key, each cut of the key corresponds to a certain length on a key pin. So, when you see a 1 cut, the key pin's 0 0.110 in length. And then when you go down to an 8 cut, it's 0 0.2192. So that means a 1 cut, the key pin's physically shorter than the 8 cut, the key pin is much longer. The thing you need to remember is the height of the key pen plus the height of the area on the key all equal the same length. So if you're going to have a one cut, that's going to be a short key pen, but there's going to be more material on the key to lift that key pen up. So when you insert the right key, all the key pins will lift up to the top and it will push the driver pins up and out of the way. When you look at this key, it has the code specified on it as 66572, and that reads from bow to tip. So this is a 6 cut 66572. So on the 2 cut on the very end, you can see how the key it is much higher when it is lifted up, but the key pen is going to be much shorter than the 6 cut. When we insert the proper key, you will see how all the key pens will lift up to the shear line and that would push any of the driver pins up and out of the way and then the lock will open. Now I'd like to get into more detail about how different key pin heights can affect the effectiveness of the security pins. What I have laid out for us here is all of the key pins placed in order. In position one that is a one cut key pin. That is the shortest key pin that an American lock makes. Then when you go up to position 7, that is the 7 cut, and then up in the corner here, that is the 8 cut. One thing you can notice is they are getting longer with each depth. A number 1 cut is the shortest cut, and a number 8 cut is the longest cut. What I'd like to do now is insert the key pens into this plug here with number 1 and slot 1, and then we'll be able to see how they progressively get taller and how that can affect the choice of security pin we would like to put in for the given key pin. So what I have done is I have pinned up six pins into this plug going in a increasing depth. In slot one I have the one depth and it goes one, three, five, six, seven, and eight. One thing I'd like you to notice as as we're moving up from slot one up to slot six you can see that the key pin is terminating much higher and in the 8 pin you can see in slot 6 it is almost sitting at the shear line. Typically speaking when you want to optimize security pins when we're talking about spool pins and serrated pins I like to reserve the spool pins for the shorter cuts like the 1, 3, and 5 here and the serrateds for the longer cuts like the 6, 7, and 8. The way a spool pin becomes effective is when the middle diameter of it can get stuck. And in order for that to happen, you want to be able to have the spool pin sit a little bit recessed inside the plug. And if you were to use that on a longer key pin, it would never come into play. 
and I will try to visualize that for you in just a second. Now looking right to left, you can see the spool pin that is the most recessed is the one in slot 1. That is the one cut key pin and by far the most shortest one. This spool is going to come into play. It is so recessed in there that it will really be able to take advantage of all the aspects of a spool pin. But as you're progressing through this lock, you can see that in position 2 it looks pretty effective. Position 3 it looks pretty effective. But as soon as you start to hit position 4, you can see now that the wider outer diameter of the spool pin is what's being kept in the plug. The middle diameter, which is the thinner, is not. So this spool pin is now becoming ineffective. And that is a number 6 depth. So what you can tell is when you're pinning spool pins, you really want to try to put it over the shorter key pins. Just look at position 6. That is the 8 cut. And that spool pin is almost sitting at the shear line and absolutely no part of that spool is coming into play and that spool pin is going to pick exactly like a standard pin. Most likely positions 3, 4, and 5 would pick like standard pins because the spools would not come into play. In a situation like that, I would reserve a serrated pin to put into those positions. I typically, for my rule of thumb, is I put spools over shorter key pins and serrated over longer key pins. One thing I have noticed since I have been learning about locks is a lot of commercial locks that you get, the security pins seem to be either arbitrarily assigned in the position they are in and they do not go over a specific length of key pin. They are either designated a spool always goes there or it's just completely random. I am curious to hear your experiences with how you've seen commercial um, companies pin their locks. I feel like majority of the time it is almost at random. But this is how your spool pins sit when you have them sitting in your lock. And this is something important to keep in mind when you'd like to have them be more effective. Now that we have a basic understanding of my general rule of thumb on how I'd like to pin a spool pin versus serrated pin, where a spool is over a short key pin and a serrated key pin is over a longer key pin, let's look at our original key here, 66572. So when we look at our chart here, 66572, going back to what we just saw, a 6 pin was more of a longer key pin, and that was about the cutoff where we're going to start doing serrated pins. So what I'm thinking for this is going to be serrated, serrated, spool, serrated, spool. I'm going to insert the key pins into the plug and if you're not good at visualizing it in that sense by looking at the numbers, what you can do is insert your key pins into the plug and just physically look and see how much room you have. And if you can see that there's going to be enough room for a spool to sit, then you certainly can put one there. But the goal is to have the spools act like spools and not like standard pens. So let's take a quick peek and see how we are looking. So for me definitely, that looks like I'm going to end up doing a serrated, serrated, spool, serrated, spool, and I'm going to get that put up for you in just a second so you can see exactly how they're going to sit. So we just pinned up a lock that was a 66572. You can tell that in positions 1 and 2 we did serrated pins because the key pin was a little bit too long for a spool pin and the spool would not have come into play. In position number 3 we did a spool pin that was about the cutoff for spools. Any further down with the depth chart, we would have been having the outer diameter of the spool sitting up too high and it would have behaved more like a standard pen. We did a serrated in 4 and a spool in position 5. I feel like we made a pretty balanced lock here and this will prove to be a decent pick. One thing I'd like you to make sure that you do when you pin your serrated pens, you want to put the more serrated end down into the plug and the less serrated end touching the springs. Sometimes when you buy serrated pens, they only come half serrated, where half looks like a standard pen, the other half looks like a serrated pen. 
If you want to take full effect of the serrated pin, you want to make sure the serrations go into the plug. One last thing you can do to optimize your locks further is to change around the bidding on your key pins and make them more aggressive. One thing that many people like to do is put long key pins in the very front of the lock and then put shorter key pins following them. What this does is it makes it so much harder to pick those shorter key pins in the back without oversetting the key pins in the front. Often you're going to be faced with a situation where you might need to use a deeper hook, but not all keyways can accommodate that. So if you can make more difficult bidding with optimized security pins, you can really make a great lock. A popular trick many people like to do also is put a long key pin in the second to last slot. So this would be in position four on this key and then put a short key pin in the final slot in the back, which would be position five. That long short combination makes it so in order to set that last pin, you run the risk of oversetting all the pins before it and then that long key pin right directly in front of it. To make that even more difficult, people like to add a spool pin in that position because now you have to fight off that counter rotation plus risk oversetting it. When you can really optimize the key bidding plus the security pins, you can make even an easy lock into a pretty formidable lock with just smart pinning. If you guys have any examples or any thoughts on how you would like to see a lock optimized and what you do in your practice, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what everyone's thoughts are on this. This is a pretty interesting topic and it is really cool how just changing the pinning alone on a lock can make it behave so differently. But if you guys have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.